In this video, I'm going to show you how to install hip and ridge tiles for your concrete S-shaped tile roof. All right, let's get started with the installation of the hip tiles. Uh, you can see number one thing we've done is we've stopped our two by eight short. What this is gonna allow us to do is bring our tiles all the way in. So when you're looking from underneath or you're looking from the sides, we have a symmetric roof. Uh, it's also gonna allow us to put our mortar head here to start our hip off. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install mortar all the way up across, then install our hip. This is important to bring low enough for you to be able to nail your hip in. If you can imagine if this piece of wood that's two by eight started right here, you wouldn't have anywhere for this hip tile to be nailed. So you wanna make sure you plan that out correctly. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is you're gonna see us spraying water on the areas that we're mortaring. The purpose behind this is to let the concrete absorb some moisture. Because what happens in any concrete or mortar application, whether it's a tile roof or a tile floor, if your tile is too dry or if you're, the surface that you're bonding to is too dry, it automatically sucks up the moisture from the mortar or from the concrete and doesn't allow for a good bond. So you wanna make sure that you just wet it a little bit. What we're using is a real simple tool. It's a water bottle with a hole on top, so nothing fancy. And you want to do that throughout the day as you're mortaring. It's not like you're doing it once. Now, this beginning of the hip is probably one of the areas that is more of an art, depending on how you want it to look, what your desired final outcome is. Now, one thing that you can do is use broken pieces of tile as a fill-in. When you're using these scrap tiles, you want to make sure that you also wet them, because if you put too much mortar, it'll tend to slump. So you can stack this in between your mortar applications. So this is one way of finishing it. Again, remember that this hip end is purely aesthetic. I mean, it does a little bit to hold those towels in together and stop water from getting in there. But you can either leave it recessed like this, you can build the mortar out further. It's really up to you. For right now, we're just gonna leave this like this. Uh, now, before we install that hip, we're gonna continue on and apply mortar to the sides. And what that's gonna do is, is gonna close up these gaps here. You constantly wanna keep it wet. The mortar here serves a two-part purpose. The first being that it helps block out those larger holes, so in case there's wind-driven rain, it's gonna stop it. However, regardless of this mortar being here or not, generally we wouldn't get too much water in these corners. The second thing it does is when we install the hip tile right here, you can see if we didn't have this mortar applied, what it would look like is something like this. You can see this green underlayment, and it's gonna be clearly visible when looking at it from the bottom. So the mortar is applied to cover that up that underlayment because that's the last thing you want to see. Now in between installing these hip tiles, what we like to do is also apply a little bit of caulking here as a, a little bit of adhesive. You can also use mortar. I think adhesive caulking does a better job in just grabbing the two tiles together because we really don't want this to show. You wanna make sure that you properly mark out and measure out your overlap. So depending on, again, the hip and tile and the length of your hip. So if you imagine, if you have a 10 foot hip or a 10 foot six inch hip, you're gonna lay these out differently. You wanna divide it as best as you can so that the reveal on these is gonna be even all the way up. You can have a little bit of play in there. You know, a plus or minus half inch or an inch is not gonna be, uh, you're not gonna be able to catch that from underneath. But you don't want to have, you know, 14 inch, 14 inch, then suddenly switch it down to a 10 inch. Uh, I think it's not as appealing as having an even exposure all the way up, and you're gonna nail it and continue the same process all the way up. So you're gonna mortar it, um, nail it in, make sure you mark it out correctly, and use caulking to hold these together. And there you have it, you're done with your hips. All right, similar to the hips, what we're gonna do first before installing the ridge is apply mortar to this area between the ridge board and 
The tiles itself has going to serve two purposes. Number one, it's going to keep out a large volume of that wind-driven rain. Number two, and I think more importantly, I think the primary reason is it's going to prevent the underlayment from showing because as you're looking from the bottom, standing from the ground, you're looking up, you're going to see it in between these tiles and you're going to see this underlayment. So we want to prevent that from happening. Just like any time we use mortar, we're going to apply a little bit of water to improve our adhesion. This first ridge near the rake piece is probably going to be the most detailed piece right here. There's two ways of essentially installing this ridge. One is to go on top of the rake. The other is to finish pretty much flush with it and mortar this head. I prefer to do it that way. So I have to build this area up with mortar first. And just like any time we use a lot of mortar, we're going to be using these broken pieces of tile as a filler. I'm also going to wet these pieces prior to installing them. Generally, when working this area, I prefer to put a little bit of extra mortar, then press it down with the ridge itself. Again, this is just as much aesthetics, if not more, than it is waterproofing. So, you can pick the color of mortar, how far you want it sticking out, if any at all. This gap here, you can either fill with mortar. Generally, I'd like to fill it with caulking to give it a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more adhesion. And of course, we'll give it a final wash. There you have it. So that's the, really the most difficult detail you have here on your tile roof, or at least when installing your ridge. The next step would be just to continue this ridge similar to what we did. The hip would be applying mortar here, putting a little bit of caulking here in between the two laps installing the next ridge, putting a nail here, and ensuring that you have the same reveal all the way through. And that's pretty much it when it comes to installing your hip and ridge on your tile roof. Thanks for watching. We have a lot of videos on our channel related to all types of roofing. And if I missed anything in this video, or if you have any comments on how you like to do it, let me know in the comments below.